Here at Ripley's, we're no strangers to the bizarre rituals of human cannibalism, with forks from Fiji meant for human flesh sitting in our collection, and even conversations with modern-day cannibals on film, it's easy for the human species to dominate the cannibal conversation. But believe it or not, the cannibals in the animal kingdom are just as fascinating. Get a taste for them today on Cool Stuff, Strange Things. Archaeological and genetic evidence continues to tell us much about human past. There's evidence that cannibalism was practiced for hundreds of thousands of years by Homo sapiens and other archaic hominins. Human bones bearing marks consistent with butchering and cooking date back more than 600,000 years. Researchers suggest ritual cannibalism was a common feature of prehistoric human societies before the Upper Paleolithic period. Now, while Hannibal Lecter liked his liver with a side of fava beans and a nice Chianti, most human beings have improved their table manners and menus over the millennia. But there are plenty of species on Earth who indulge in cannibalism. Motivated by factors ranging from starvation to stress, what's more, some unfortunate species of snakes take it to the next level with a process called auto-cannibalism. We'll get to that in a second, but first let's talk about ants. One million cannibal ants trapped in a Soviet-era nuclear bunker. While this sounds like the makings of a B-rated sci-fi flick, the story is all too real. In July 2015, scientists in western Poland made a grisly discovery. While inspecting a mid-20th century abandoned nuclear bunker, they stumbled across nearly a million trapped wood ants that had resorted to cannibalism. The colony teemed above ground in the bunker's ventilation pipes. Unfortunately, over the years, a steady stream of unlucky worker ants had fallen through the pipe, landing in the bunker with no means of escape. Once lost in the grim remains of this shelter, there was no escape or food at all, so the workers adapted, evolving into a queenless colony that survived through cannibalism. Scientists discovered that 93% of the two million ant corpses inside the bunker had bite marks or puncture holes, indicating cannibalism. To survive, the worker ants continued their social tasks, even building a makeshift mound from dirt they found inside the bunker itself. Despite a lack of reproduction, their ranks got regularly repropagated each time a worker fell through the cracks. Before leaving the nuclear weapons bunker, scientists set up a wooden plank to act as a boardwalk, allowing the ants to escape and go above ground. A few months later, the scientists returned, finding all but a few stray ants had made their escape from the ant cannibal pit. Some insects and arachnids, like praying mantis and black widows, develop a fatal taste for their mates. But for baby hump earwigs, it's all about their self-sacrificing mothers. These humps are the only species of earwigs that participate in matrophagy, or consuming their own mothers. To maximize the likelihood their babies survive, these loving mothers allow their offspring to consume them. This survival mechanism delays the dispersal of nymphs from the nest, resulting in a higher overall survival rate. But besides hump earwigs, a handful of other bug moms also make the ultimate sacrifice. These include arachnids such as crab and desert spiders and pseudoscorpions. The only vertebrae known to participate in this behavior is the Sicilian, a group of limbless serpentine amphibians. Babies feed on the mother's oviduct lining and later her outer skin. Fortunately, however, they apparently only need a few nibbles and she survives to grow her skin back in just a few days. Now, although matrophagy can be a thing amongst insects, arachnids, and Sicilians, there are far more instances of voracious moms in the animal world, particularly among some of the cutest and cuddliest species on the planet. For example, rabbits may look adorable, but when it comes to raising babies, sometimes hunger just gets in the way. Besides a rumbly tummy, rabbit moms will eat their babies at the first sign of trouble. Triggers include a nearby predator, stress, thirst, or temperature drops. Some even eat their babies just to keep their nests tidy. So, uh, make sure to keep those rooms clean, kids. Of course, rabbits have nothing on their smaller cousins, the hamsters. Hamster moms have a long list of reasons they eat their young. They include everything from the inability to defend their babies to perceived signs of weakness or disease. And the bloodbath just doesn't stop there either. Adult hamsters also kill and eat one another for various reasons, including territorial disputes. This behavior isn't relegated to one species either. Whether we're talking dwarf hamsters, robo hamsters, or siren hamsters, they're all cannibals. While few of us are surprised by cannibalism in the insect world, it proves less common among vertebrates. Apart from the cute and cuddly ones, that is, tiger salamanders represent a big exception to this rule. Not only do they happily eat one another, but some even morph, developing more prominent teeth and a broader head to facilitate their pinch hand for the unpalatable. 
Interestingly, scientists have found that the transformation into a cannibalistic tiger salamander requires a very specific environment, namely one where food and other resources prove scarce. No major surprise there. However, researchers have also concluded that growing up among other siblings renders salamanders less likely to transform into cannibalistic amphibians. In other words, preying on non-family members helps salamanders secure a dynasty. While famed primatologist and ethologist Dr. Jane Goodall has made many fascinating observations of chimps' capacity to use tools, express long memory, and express compassion over the years, she has also been privy to some of their more disturbing behavior while studying at Gombe Park in Tanzania. Over a four-year period, Goodall witnessed a four-year-long war that resulted in the utter annihilation of a small group of chimps. The war involved violence, killings, and even cannibalism. She also witnessed a mother-daughter chimpanzee duo named Passion and Palm who went on a cannibalistic killing spree. All told, the pair killed and ate at least 10 baby chimps within their own community. Today, the researchers who have continued Goodall's work still struggle to understand the motivations behind chimp violence and cannibalism specifically. Rather than anomalies, they've witnessed similar behaviors carried out by males and females alike. Goodall, reflecting, said, It is sobering that our new awareness of chimpanzee violence compels us to acknowledge that these ape cousins of ours are even more similar to humans than we thought before. So far, we've covered cannibals that eat other members of their own species, but what if a creature eats itself? Not only do some species of snakes cannibalize each other, but they inadvertently take part in auto-cannibalism, or the consumption of their own bodies. The cause is often a case of mistaken identity, with a snake mistaking its own tail for prey. This happens most commonly with king and rat snakes, who prey on other serpents, but when this occurs, they end up locked in a life and death battle with themselves. There's even an ancient Greek word and symbol for this predicament, the Ouroboros. While the Ouroboros represents the eternal cycle of life and death, snakes that make this mistake usually suffocate in real life. So what can we make out of all this? When it comes to nature, there's little delineation between peers and prey. You better be careful the next time someone says they make a great meal. Until next time, be sure to like this video, subscribe for more cool stuff, and hit that bell for more strange things.